Claw hand, ape hand, and the sign of benediction are hand deformities that result from injury to either the ulnar nerve or the median nerve. These signs are frequently encountered in clinical scenarios and exam questions. It is often difficult for students to distinguish among these signs, and the underlying anatomy seems counterintuitive to many people. For the most part, these signs relate to the loss of function of muscles that act on digits 2 through 5, with the thumb being only peripherally involved. More specifically, they result from impaired function of muscles that act on the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of digits 2 through 5. Let's begin by reviewing the muscles that act on these joints. First, extending out to the proximal and distal phalanges of digits 2 through 5 on the dorsum of the hand are the tendons of extensor digitorum. On digit 2 and digit 5, extensor digitorum is accompanied by the extensor indices and extensor digiti minimi muscles, respectively. However, the basic mechanics of finger extension are not altered by these two additional muscles, so the remainder of our conversation will focus on extensor digitorum as the sole extensor compartment muscle going to digits 2 through 5. If the extensor digitorum were the only muscle acting at the IP joints, then it would easily be able to extend both the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of digits 2 through 5. However, under normal circumstances, extensor digitorum is a powerful extensor only of the metacarpophalangeal joint. It is quite ineffective at extending the interphalangeal joints. Why is this? The answer has to do with mechanical opposition that is provided by flexor compartment muscles that also function at the interphalangeal joints. Specifically, flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. These two muscles are powerful flexors of the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joints respectively, and extensor digitorum by itself does not have sufficient mechanical advantage to overcome their actions. This can be demonstrated by considering the position of the normal hand at rest. The proximal and distal interphalangeal joints are considerably flexed due to the tonic activity of flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. But clearly, the normal hand is capable of extending the IP joints. How is this achieved? To answer this, we need to introduce two additional groups of muscles, the lumbricals and the interossei. The lumbricals are the primary flexors of the metacarpophalangeal joint of digits 2 through 5, while the interossei are responsible for abducting and adducting digits 2 through 5 at the metacarpophalangeal joint. In addition, both the lumbricals and the interossei provide necessary assistance to the extensor digitorum muscle in order to achieve full extension at the interphalangeal joints. This necessity of the lumbricals and interossei for finger extension is the source of much confusion because it seems counterintuitive. These muscles are anterior or flexor compartment muscles. How is it then that they participate in extension? The answer has to do with the distal insertion of these muscles into the extensor expansion. The extensor expansion, or extensor hood, is a tendinous aponeurosis that spreads out from the extensor digitorum tendons on the dorsum of the metacarpals and phalanges. It is by inserting into the posterior lateral aspect of the extensor expansion that the lumbricals and interossei can transmit force that assists the extensor digitorum in extending the interphalangeal joints. Because the tendons of the lumbricals and interossei pass ventral to the axis of rotation of the metacarpophalangeal joint, their contraction clearly opposes extensor digitorum and functions to flex this joint. On the other hand, since the more distal insertion of these muscles into the extensor expansion transmits the force of their pull dorsal to the axes of rotation of the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints, they also function, in concert with extensor digitorum, to extend these joints. Before moving on to discuss common clinical deformities of the hand, let's review the nerves that innervate the muscles important for moving the digits. The radial nerve innervates the extensor digitorum muscle. The median nerve innervates flexor digitorum superficialis, the radial one-half of the flexor digitorum profundus, and the first and second lumbrical muscles. In addition, the median nerve innervates the three muscles of the thenar eminence that move the thumb, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, and opponens pollicis. 
Finally, the ulnar nerve innervates the ulnar one-half of flexor digitorum profundus, the third and fourth lumbricals, all of the interosseous muscles, and adductor pollicis. Now we're ready to make sense of claw hand, ape hand, and the sign of benediction. Claw hand results from injury to the ulnar nerve. To see how claw hand comes about, let's consider what happens if there is complete loss of ulnar nerve function due to an injury at the wrist. In this situation, we lose innervation of all of the interosseous muscles and the ulnar two lumbricals. With these deficits, digits two and three are largely unaffected, though they do lose the abduction and adduction provided by their interosseous muscles. However, digits four and five are dramatically affected. Loss of the lumbrical and interosseous function at these digits means that the action of extensor digitorum at the metacarpophalangeal joint is unopposed. This leads to hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint. Additionally, without the assistance of the lumbricals and interossei, extensor digitorum is unable to counteract the powerful flexion exerted by flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus at the interphalangeal joints. Thus, digits 4 and 5 remain stuck in a position of hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joints and hyperflexion at the IP joints. Let's conclude by considering two hand deformities caused by median nerve injury, ape hand and the sign of benediction. In the normal hand at rest, digits 2 through 5 are loosely flexed, and all are in the same dorsoventral plane. The thumb is held in a more ventral plane due primarily to the tonic action of the thenar muscles, abductor pollicis brevis, and opponent's pollicis. Following median nerve injury, the thenar muscles are paralyzed, and the thumb is pulled into the plane of the other digits by the unopposed action of adductor pollicis muscle. The position of the hand, with all of the digits aligned in the same dorsoventral plane, resembles the hand position of some lower primates, hence the term ape hand. Finally, the sign of benediction is seen in people with a high median nerve injury. However, in contrast to claw hand and ape hand, which are default positions of the injured hand at rest, the sign of benediction is an active sign that occurs only when a person with median nerve injury attempts to make a fist. Following median nerve injury, the default position is ape hand. When this person attempts to form a fist by flexing the digits, the sign of benediction is made. This results from the fact that high median nerve injury results in paralysis of flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor pollicis longus, flexor pollicis brevis, and the radial one-half of flexor digitorum profundus. Thus, the only remaining functional flexor is the ulnar one-half of flexor digitorum profundus, which results in partial flexion of digits 4 and 5, while the other digits remain extended. This position of the hand takes its name from the position of a priest's hand when he bestows blessings or benedictions. Obviously, claw hand and the sign of benediction look very similar. While there are subtle anatomical differences between these two signs, the most important thing to remember is that claw hand results from damage to the ulnar nerve and is the permanent fixed position of the hand at rest. In contrast, the sign of benediction is the result of median nerve injury and is seen only during an active attempt to flex the digits. When the hand is relaxed, the clawed appearance goes away.